Uh, I've had a fascinating day actually, um, a day to challenge perceptions. Uh, started really going to Jaywick and you hear not very good things about it, but when you go there it's nowhere near as bad as I think the image sometimes le would lead you to believe. And what you saw there, I think it was a very strong sense of community. And one of the things we've got to work out with our partners at Essex, County Council and Tendering, in that case, Basildon and Colchester, is how do we take that sense of community, the, what is there, and just help it to deliver the sort of services that we want to. That's the whole purpose of this. This is all about system change and a whole system change. And I've been very enthused by what I've seen. I've seen a council, a series of councils that are absolutely intent on effecting change. I think the thinking, the base thinking is there. We don't quite yet know what the questions are. We certainly don't know what the answers are. What I've seen here is the councils who want to come on that journey with us. And that is probably the most positive thing that, I, that you wanted to take away, is a desire and a willingness and an ability to work together. The ambition is absolutely there. Again, you know, we, we saw that uh, from the number of people in those meetings. We heard from all of them. It was a very positive feeling uh, from both local authorities, uh, health partnerships. Um, we don't know the scale of ambition yet because we don't really yet know what is possible. That's the point of this particular phase of what we're trying to do, is to scope out what can be done. Well, what you see is fantastic local volunteers and local organisations putting on much needed services. Uh, but they are very dependent, very often, upon charismatic leaders and we saw that today with people like Carla as we saw uh, and the question is how do we replicate that because you can't take someone like that and systemize it. We need to look at and understand is are there lessons that you can take away which aren't just dependent on a particular person. Uh, this all starts with people. One of the strong messages that came over is you know, it may not be the council that does it because Actually, it's the person at the council that the person deals with. That may be a much more important relationship. And if the, that doesn't work, then they won't trust the council. So it is, it is down to individuals. How do we train those individuals to exhibit the sort of behaviours that will encourage people into uh, the right behaviours? As a Marie Curie nurse, I most nights I would be in a limited space because I was at the patient's bedside so for nine hours I would be sat still then after work I would go home and go to bed so therefore I'd sleep for like seven hours by the time I got up it was then time to get a few bits around the house done and then back to work so there wasn't an awful lot of time between and I became lazy, basically. Um, then as the waistband began to expand, my self-esteem went down. So I didn't want to join a gym. Um, and then I, I found that I was limited in myself to go in anywhere. So I contacted the local um, people and found out about the walk. The walk was at 12.30 which meant I could sleep after work, then get up and go for the walk, and then do the afternoon um, circuit class, and then go home and get ready for work. And that built up my self-esteem. I began to lose weight, didn't need to get new uniforms. I met so many people, it was just amazing. Well, we've got quite a, a mixed um, bunch of volunteers there. Some of them have got quite complex uh, family medical issues. Um, one of our volunteers has Alzheimer's. Um, uh, he can go into the garden, it's a safe environment. Um, he works mainly in the fruit cages and he can work away there. He's got no one around him to bother him and it's, it's a brilliant environment for him. What do I get out of it? I'm 88, what do I look like? 
look pretty good for my age, I think. And what do I get out of it? I've got a husband. Uh, we got married three years ago when he was 87 and I was 84. Just come and give it a go. Just sit and watch and see how good we all are. I think we're brilliant, you know. It's down to Maggie, isn't it? She keeps us all in good spare. And I say, I'll come to this class two times a week. I work really hard. Well, I want to look sleek like Maggie. The biggest challenge for Basden uh, at the moment is actually really engaging with its community, so understanding what it is we need to support them with, how we can get them to be more active, uh, rather than just assuming uh, what people want. So it's really engaging with them, listening to what makes people want to get out and be active. The, the whole point of this pilot is about everyone uh, working together, so that's across the public sector, with its community, community sector, all working together to actually to get, deliver the outcomes, which is about everyone being active. We um, run Basildon, South Essex Gymnastics Club, over in the Basildon Sporting Village, um, and we've expanded here because we want to provide opportunity for all of the um, people in the surrounding areas, in Pitsy in particular. Uh, there's a lot of people that are trying to get into the club, and we know how fantastic gymnastics is at providing active movement and just getting involved in, in social activity. Uh, so we, we, we took the you know decision to actually open up this centre to provide as much opportunity as we possibly can. We are a voluntary sector group and we uh, organisation and we recruit and train parent volunteers to go and support uh, local parents within the home for up to two hours a week. Most of our work is around emotional well-being um, and so depression, postnatal depression, um, stress and anxiety or just parents feeling like they can't go out so they get uh, like a, an agoraphobia. Um, so we go in and befriend, um, then we find out that they've usually got quite a few other issues, so it can be domestic violence, it could be homelessness, it can be debt, and what we do is we signpost them to other agencies, or we try and help them with it ourselves if they won't go anywhere to begin with, um, and we run groups as well, so like family groups, so that they can get that social interaction. We also, for our volunteers who visit for two hours a week, bring in play, they read with the children, they try and increase the language skills stuff like that. Mums that don't go out much may be suffering mental health um, which well, will not get any better while they're sat indoors and it might not be something we can do in the first week it might be something that's going to take a few weeks to actually get them out of the house um, and then you know they then they'll enjoy it sort of thing but I think it, it does take a while sometimes to get people out. We're a wellbeing provider so we work with people of all ages there's no cut off age um, and we deliver the five ways to well-being um, trying to support mental health so we do we connect people we make community dinners we um, run well youth clubs we run um, a happy hubs um, and they're just they are sessions or places that people can come and be happy and safe and healthy. So physical activity is essential for mental health. It's, it's so important to get people predominantly out of the home. Sometimes that can be a barrier as well. But get them out of the home, whether it's walk in the park, whether it's um, going into a leisure centre facility and our exercise buddies might meet somebody in a car park and walk through with them and be at the desk, pay, make sure that they, uh, if they're concession, that they get the right price. So we have a team of fantastic volunteers that would meet someone to maybe play badminton, to go swimming, and the idea is that all these activities, you can talk whilst playing or swimming or walking, and it creates a great befriending scheme, and it encourages people to get out of the house, stay physically active and then build new social groups. It's been really good to get out and see the communities firsthand. So uh, Jaywick, Sands followed by Clacton, um, on to Pitsy. Um, what I've been really struck by is the need not to do things to people, but to build what we do bottom up with their consent, their, the things they want to do. I guess the challenge is how can we take that from being really small groups 
to really do it at scale. The thing I've come away the most with today is the energy from all the partners, whether that be the county council, the borough count, district councils, uh, all the different charities and local groups. I think there's a real willingness to do things differently and that's what it's going to be. You know, none of us have been able to work with um, uh, tough groups, you know, uh, uh, people who've got low incomes and get them active. It means we've got to do things differently and I, th I think we stand a chance here.